So as part of narrative writing, you should be using speech marks and also describing someone. For the Shackleton diary, there wouldn't have been much room for using speech marks. We don't really use speech marks in diary writing. There may have been, but we don't usually do. And also describing someone. There wouldn't have been much description of how somebody looks, their actual appearance. So this is why you're going to do this activity. It will give you the chance to describe how someone looks and appears. So I just want you to look at this picture here and for 10 seconds in your head, describe what can you see? What do they look like? What's their appearance? Right, so some of the adjectives you might have thought of here are like untidy, poor, wealthy, rich. So if I'm looking at the man on the left, he looks, so this guy here, you could say maybe posh, wealthy, rich, well-dressed, smart, um, aloof, arrogant. You can kind of see his personality as well. Um, and if I look at the person on the right, yeah, maybe homeless, poor, tatty, untidy, dirty, maybe a bit smelly. So he doesn't look wealthy at all. And you can see the person on the left, the man on the left is handing the man on the right some money. So the man on the right might be begging for some money. So this is how I described this scene. Wearing old, worn and filthy clothes, the hungry beggar hastily stood up when he saw the smartly dressed gentleman walking past him on the bustling New York City street. Can you spare us some change, please, sir? asked the dishevelled man optimistically. The large, immaculately dressed man barely looked at him as he handed over some coins as he looks like a note. God bless you, said the poor man gratefully. The portly man didn't say a thing. He just glanced disapprovingly at the beggar, lit his long Cuban cigar, and blew a big ball of smoke into the face of the poor man before turning away and walking off slowly. If you never saw that picture, and I read that, again, you should be able to visualise it. Visualising veggies. You should be able to draw a picture of what I'm saying. You know it's a busy street. It's in New York. Um, one of the men's poor. One of the men is rich. One of the men is very untidy. And one of the men is very aloof and well-dressed. And he's uh, portly. He's kind of round-shaped. So he's probably eaten lots of fine food. And now he's quite overweight. He walks slowly. Walking slowly is a sign that he's very confident. He doesn't need to rush for anyone. He walks at his own pace. So there's a lot you can tell about that description, not just about how they look and where they are, but about what their personalities are like. The poor man's very optimistic. He's very, he gets up hastily. He gets up quickly. He's kind of nervous. He's desperate. He really needs some money. Whereas the guy on the left he walks slowly, he doesn't even look at him. He only looks at him for a little bit and he disapproves of him. And he lights a Cuban cigar. Cuban cigars are very expensive. Someone who's smoking Cuban cigars is a sign of someone who's got a lot of money. So there's a lot you can tell about that description. And that's what creative writing should be. It should allow you to know what the writer is describing without looking at a picture. So to go over that again, when you're describing appearance, think about how they look, their eyes, face, hair, skin, body. Also think about how they act. Arms folded suggest they are angry or shy. Arms outstretched suggest they are welcoming and happy and confident. Looking at you in the eye shows they are not afraid, but staring directly into your eyes suggests they are angry or aggressive. So there's a lot you can tell about describing someone's arms or the way they're standing or the way they get up or the way they sit down or the way they look. What are their eyes doing? If they're looking at the ground and not looking at you in the eye, that shows they're nervous. 
If they're looking you straight in the eye, that shows they feel honest and confident. He looked at me directly in the eye and said, suggests honesty, he narrowed his eyes and stared directly into mine before saying, that's very different, that suggests they're about to say something angrily. It suggests that person is angry. He's looking you directly in the eyes. So remember this when you're describing a scene and describing appearance. How you describe small things like the way they they stand up or the way their eyes are tells the reader a lot about those the people you're describing. So picture this scene. Where where may this be? So you can see the C. That large thing there, yep, that's a whale, a dead whale. So this is actually a whaling station. So this would have been where Shackleton and the four other men would have eventually arrived, the whaling station on South Georgia. So that might have been the scene that greeted them. Remember the whaling whistle and there would have been steam around. So that is the whaling station in South Georgia that they would have walked into when they finally found safety after almost two years being trapped on the ice. And now look at them. Look, imagine after that journey, look how they look. Are they looking their best? I think that's Shackleton there. Look at him. Obviously, they haven't shaved for almost two years. Um, they're beaten by the weather. Their their skin is very hard and crusty and red and sore and cracked. They wouldn't have been getting many vitamins. Their eyes are swollen. Their eyes will definitely be very red. Um, they haven't slept. They've lost a lot of weight. They don't look um, big and healthy anymore. They're very skinny. They've lost weight. So you need to be describing this. You need to imagine what they would have looked like from the perspective of the whaler when he saw them walk in and when he saw Shackleton. Alternatively, remember this. When Stanley walked into the village and finally found Livingston. Livingston at the time had been very sick. He had been just staying in the village for a long time. He hadn't been exploring, so he had actually gained a lot of weight. He was um, considered quite round, like the man you saw before. He would have walked quite slowly. He was also old. He would have had white hair, a white beard. He was probably badly sunburnt because he's been in the sun of Africa, the harsh sun, for many, many years. So imagine you were Stanley. How would you describe Livingston? Also, I think he would have been quite friendly. So he might have had warm eyes or a warm smile. He might have had his arms outstretched because he's so happy to see another Westerner and somebody that's going to help him and bring him supplies. So this is the final big part of your narrative writing assessment. You have this paper in your pack. It is just the outline of a man. You can draw Shackleton or you can draw Livingston. But it's Livingston when Stanley found him. So it's not a young Livingston. It's not when he got attacked by a lion. It's an elderly Livingston. He's just a few years before he would die. So I think he's in his late 50s. Um, he's not. He's very ill at the time. He's been in that village for a long time. So imagine what he would have looked like. Or Shackleton after that epic journey. And he's just turned up at the whaling station. So draw either Livingston when Stanley found him. Or Shackleton when he reached the whaling station on South Georgia. Remember, both were not looking their best. Both were not clean shaven. Both weren't young and healthy. Both had gone through terrible, terrible uh, illness, um, pain, trouble, and both were definitely not looking their best. What was their build like? Their eyes, their hair, beard. Were they healthy or unhealthy? Happy or sad? Narrow-eyed or wide-eyed? If you're narrow-eyed, usually you're quite angry. If you're wide-eyed, you're excited, you're happy. Their skin, was it white, black, red, soft, smooth, dry, cracked, sore? What dialogue will you have? You are Stanley or the Nor Norwegian whaler on South Georgia. So I want you to have some dialogue. What are you going to say and what did they say back to you? It could just be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're here. He asked, or you replied. So remember, I want some dialogue. So you will be using speech marks, but you will mainly be describing their appearance. What did they look like? Imagine you were that whaler. Imagine you were Stanley and you're seeing Shackleton or you're seeing Livingston for the first time in the flesh. So do your best. So the first thing you need to do is draw them. Draw them with detail. 
drawing is part of your plan. A good detailed drawing will give you ideas about what you can write. Then describe them, describe their appearance, have some dialogue, make it creative. And I think you'll have a brilliant piece of narrative writing to finish off this unit. Good luck.